Hello and welcome, my name is Chris from ChristopherHall.com and welcome to this latest uh, low back pain uh, presentation. Uh, what we're going to be looking at in this video is one of the major causes or what I think is one of the major causes of low back pain and um, how we can go about correcting that and overcoming it and reducing our risk um, of, of low back pain. So uh, in this slide um, we're looking at the western world and low back pain. So the big sort of quote, the big uh, phrase that, that people use is 80% of the Western population will experience low back pain in their life. So at some point in your life, you're going to experience low back pain if you live in the Western world. Now, through um, reading, research, whatever you'd like to call it, um, we understand that uh, low back pain uh, can be caused by being uh, uh, or involved in a sedentary lifestyle. So we're we're stationary for a long period of time, sat down, um, and we are um, we have poor posture. So if we're sat at a desk uh, for long periods of time, that's going to be causing our joints to stiffen, and we're going to create poor posture, which eventually, um, through through many different means, is going to cause some degree of of low back pain. And then what we have is the other end of the scale when it comes to exercise. Now, the big exercise uh, philosophy maybe these days is about how many calories you can burn. And it's about uh, sort of that no pain, no gain mentality. So you've got to basically you've got to go into the gym and you've got to work hard. So um, we've got to burn as many calories as we can. So we've got to, you know, we've got to work for maybe as long as we can. Uh, we've got to also uh, go as heavy as we can. If, if that makes any sense. So that, that whole sort of, I've really got to push myself, I've got to work hard when I go to the gym. So we can see that uh, the modern the modern lifestyle um, is a stationary one. We know the modern lifestyle is very sedentary, uh, which is creating poor postures and increasing risks of low back pain. And we also know in exercise that the whole philosophy, because you can just look at the marketing, you can look at the way um, trainers go about their business and the way TV programs um, portray exercise. It's about burning as many, as many calories as you can and also no pain, no gain. So you've got to go and work really, really hard. Now, in modern life, we go from one extreme to the other and this can increase our chances of low back pain. So what we're looking at here is a lifestyle of extremes. So we're looking at a very stationary um, period of time for maybe eight hours and then a very uh, energetic and active um, one hour potentially um, at the gym or out running or whatever it might be. So we're going from a very stationary to a very active and then back to a very stationary and back to a very, uh, a very active period. So that's kind of the dy dynamic that we're in. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail and explain why that's creating um, sort of this, this, this low back pain condition that the 80 percent of the Western population are experiencing. So we looked at modern lifestyle or modern life, that it goes from um, one extreme to the other. And what I've tried to put uh, on this slide is how we can go about reducing this risk of low back pain. Now, exercise is touted as really good for um, our health, our fitness and sort of injury prevention and injury rehabilitation. And where that is true, we have to understand that it's the right amount of exercise. As Stuart McGill says, we have to get the envelope right. There's this low back pain envelope. And if we don't do enough exercise, so if we are sedentary, we increase our risk. But if we are on the flip side of that, on the other extreme to that, if we are too active, we also increase, increase our risk of low back pain. So what I've used here in this little diagram here so you can see these yellow lines on the screen now this is an example if we look at physiology this is an example of homeostasis so if we take body temperature for example as we exercise or as we warm up our temperature rises so our body begins to sweat to bring to cool our body but then if we were to go to the other extreme and be very cold our body would shiver to increase our temperature 
So our normal body temperature is 37 degrees. And our body is looking to maintain that. And it will sweat to cool us and it will shiver to increase our temperature. That is known as homeostasis. And in, in the middle is our optimum temperature that we want to stay at is 37 degrees so if we go above it we, it brings us down if we go below it it brings us up now this example can be used in in exercise and in um, having a healthy back as I've put here so as you can see the straight line is a healthy back if we go from one extreme which is um, too much exercise at the top that's going to increase our risk of back pain if we go below the line and we are sedentary that's going to increase our back pain or risk of back pain. So what we have to do is maintain moderation, rhythm and consistency in how we move and when we move to be able to maintain a healthy back. Because like I just described, if we go from one extreme to the other of sedentary, active, sedentary, active, sedentary, active, then we're going to be um, increasing our risk of low back pain. So if we can moderate how much we move so if we if we are in a sedentary job if we can move a little bit more then what we can do is we can then begin to readdress the balance and the swing isn't so volatile because our body doesn't like volatility volatility is very unstable if you look at the stock market if you're trading in um, stocks every day so you're buying and selling every day those types of stocks are very unstable they can be very high one day but they can be very low the next and that's um, how our risk of low back pain is increased by having these volatile swings in being sedentary and being active. So if we can be more moderate, more rhythmical and more consistent in how we are stationary and how we are moving, we will then be able to readdress that balance and our back or the health of our back will become a lot more stable. Now, it's never going to stay exactly on that line. I'm not in under any illusions that we are going to have a healthy back 24-7. It's always going to be fluctuating just above and below. Just like a plane, if it's flying from London to New York, it's never going to go in an exact straight line. It's always going to be slightly veering offline. Then the satellite will tell it you're veering offline so it will correct itself. And then it will go back the other way. And then it will correct itself. And then it will go back the other way. So it's always just on and off of a healthy back, let's say. But if we can moderate or be more moderate, rhythmical, consistent in how we move, our healthy back will become um, more uh, tolerant to when we become volatile, if that makes sense. So there's nothing wrong with doing hard exercise and there's nothing wrong with sitting down for a long period of time. It's just how we manage that dynamic. And if you want to find out a little bit more about this, you can come to uh, my website, ChristopherHole.com. There's plenty more videos on there. You can sign up to the free members area um, and get um, even more videos on there, um, exercise libraries, uh, flexibility libraries, so on and so forth. Um, so if you want to find out a little bit more, obviously uh, come to the website. Uh, my name's Chris from ChristopherHole.com. I'll speak to you in another video.